Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing some track prep to the car. We're heading to English Town Raceway tomorrow. So we have to fill out this uh, inspection sheet or whatever you want to call it. But I'll post a picture of it right here so you get an idea of what they're looking for. So basically, first I'm just going to go through this list and check off everything one by one. And then once that gets done, um, I want to go through and check some other stuff in the car. And then I'll show you guys the things that I take to the track with me. Uh, the track for me is about two and a half hours away. And if you guys watch my Honda Acura Mega Meet video, uh, you'll know that a uh, hundred miles into the trip on the way home the distributor seized up and I had to get the car towed home so I'm hoping that's not going to happen again so let's get started first thing on the list is a clean interior no easy passes or nothing hanging from the mirrors so I'm going to go through the car and pull out everything that doesn't belong in here next thing up on the list is the belts to make sure they're not cracked or anything like that but um in the time belt video i'll put a brand new alternator belt on and the time belt's brand new so all the belts are good for this car so the third thing on the list is to make sure the battery terminals are in good condition and it's properly tied down which this one doesn't wobble at all terminals are good and they always look for this cover on the positive side but you can see there's no corrosion or anything on this so we are good there so Want to move on to the next one next up they want you to check the brakes they want to make sure you have at least 50 percent pad life so i'll definitely have that on this one and there's no excessive cracks or warpage on the rotors which are good they want to make sure that the brake lines are clearing the caliber and the wheel which they definitely are and fresh brake fluid pretty good too so that passes now I just want to go through and inspect the rest of the wheels make sure everything's good and then we'll move on to the next one so the fifth thing on the list is to make sure all body panels are secure the tires aren't going to be scraping on the body uh, this car is not excessively low so I'm not worried about that um, I did have a problem last time I went to the track I believe it was this corner light this popped out I just ended up taping taping it back on with some duct tape just for the time being so I'm gonna check these screws and then I believe everything else should be good because everything's still mounted out of the factory so we're just gonna go around and check that I probably need to tighten this bolt right here oh, actually that's pretty good So all that stuff looks pretty good. I just want to double check those corner lights on my car. Next up is uh, engine mounts. No oil leaks, no fuel leaks. So as you can see, these motor mounts are pretty new. So those are definitely good. I don't have any oil leaking from this engine anymore. Once I change this valve cover gasket. Um, also, no fuel leaks. I definitely know I don't have any of those. I would have fixed that a long time ago so easy enough all right so number seven is going to be the coolant you want to make sure the hoses are in good condition which these should be pretty decent um you want to make sure the radiator and the uh, overflow is mounted securely which these are and the fluid's pretty fresh in here probably only 60 miles since I changed the timing belt so all that's fresh so that's another easy pass the next safety check is to make sure that the brake lights are visible and all working so I pretty much just took my jack handle and stuck it in here pressing down the pedal since I'm out here by myself and you can see brake lights work third brake light so another easy pass list is actually going pretty smooth the next check is they want to make sure you have at least one properly secured rear view mirror 
So I have both factory uh, side view mirrors. They face rearward, so I don't know if they would consider those rear view mirrors. But I also have this Broadway type mirror I picked up from uh, Vance Auto Parts for like 14 bucks. It mounts right over the stock mirror, and you get a much larger view with this mirror. So next up is the tire check. It says that they want uh, 3 30 seconds tread depth on street tires and race tires, no cracks or bulges in the sidewalls. So I'm driving up there on these uh, K1s and these have decent tread. I'm not driving on the uh, Hypergrams because those have the federal RSRRs on there. And um, I think they'll wear down too quick, but those only have one track day. So I'm positive they'll pass. I can't find my uh, tire depth gauge right now. So I'm gonna have to run over to the auto parts store and grab another one. They're only like two or three bucks, just so I can get some proper measurements to put on this chart. But these are good, so that's an easy pass again. And the next one is uh, wheel lug nuts must be torqued to factory spec. Bent or cracked wheels are not accepted. And we already know all these wheels are straight. So are the Koenigs. And I'm definitely going to torque it back to 80 foot pounds when I put these wheels back on. So the next one up is uh, no cracks or obstructions and all devices hanging from mirror must be removed. That's for the windshield. So this windshield's not cracked. There's nothing hanging from it. So another check off. So the seatbelt uh, check, I always have questions about this one. Uh, the paper says you can't use four-point harnesses unless they're DOT certified by some certain standard and you can't use five or six-point harnesses with stock seats. And then it says if you're going to be carrying an instructor or student, you have to have matching seat belts. So I have a five-point on the driver's side, a six-point on the passenger side, and they're different rails. But they're all mounted securely, so hopefully they'll let me slide with this. So basically, I'm just going to have to check this off and hope it passes tech when I get there. The next check is for the roll bar. There's a lot of stipulations for if you have a convertible, but that doesn't concern me because it's a hard top car. So it does say for anywhere where your helmet can hit the roll bar, it needs to be padded. So I'm going to worry about this section right here because all across here has padding. So I picked up another section of Morosa roll bar padding. That's part number. So basically I'm just gonna mount that here. And I'm not too worried about that crossbar because if you look at it from this way, that's pretty far. If your neck bends that far, you must be a giraffe. So I normally just put this one and secure it with some zip ties. So I'm gonna do that right now and get another check marked off. So I have the padding mounted on. I have three zip ties on there. So basically one right here across this crossbar so it's not gonna slide down. And I have another one across this bar here so it's not going to slide one at the top make sure all the cut zip ties are flush as possible so you can't get cut at all and then the next one on the checklist is the exhaust it says it can't be excessively loud and um gotta make sure the hangers aren't cracked up or deteriorating so i'm gonna climb under the car and take a look at those hopefully they're all good if not i have a couple hangers sitting around here that i could use Pretty much the last one on the checklist is auxiliary equipment. It wants to make sure you don't have a bunch of like in-car video recording and audio recording all over the place. So for this car, I do have the GoPro uh, camera mount right there on the roll bar. Uh, that's not in the way at all and it's firmly mounted. And then over here on the driver's side on the windshield, I'm gonna put another mount like one of the stick on kinds but i want to clean the windshield and everything first so that way i get like a hood view but other than that the list is done but there's some other things that i want to go through just for my personal satisfaction so i pretty much want to go under the car like and check all the sway bar bolts uh the shock bolt the bolt to the trailing arm and the one that goes through the subframe on both sides and then in the front, I want to check all the bolts for the control arms, the shocks, 
make sure the ball joints are all tightened up and the cotter pins are in there um, make sure the bracket for the brakes is tight even though that should be um, just double check all the exhaust bolts make sure those are tightened up and then pretty much that'll be it I might double check the motor mount bolts even though the motor mounts were on the checklist this it never said anything about making sure anything was secure except for the bumpers and stuff so I'll just want to breeze through this real quick check everything make sure it's good and then I'll show you what I'm going to be packing to take to the track with me. So I checked all the suspension and all the bolts were tight front and back. So that's good. Um, I also checked the oil level and that's good. I had to add a tad bit. Uh, brake fluid, everything's good. So around on the back of the car. I know in the last video I was complaining about this thing rattling and making noise. But this X-Bar definitely takes up a lot of trunk space and carrying four tires, toolbox, chair, lunch, and this is a, a really big pain. So what I did was I took out the bolts that I had in here and I added these uh, pins. So you just pull out that hitch pin and clevis bolt or pin or whatever they call that. And now I could just move the bar out the way. And the same thing on this side, pop that out. Now I could slide tires up in here, have tires back here, and just have my toolbox on top of it. That way, it's easy to put in and out. Yeah, it's a little bit loose, but in theory, I shouldn't even need this crossbar because of that X bar should be holding the pressure from the corners. But anyway, that's just an ideal for this track day. So hopefully this doesn't get on my nerves too bad or I'm going to end up taking this out, taking this off at the track because it definitely wobbles a good amount. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I do have a couple things in the car that are going to need to come out when I get to the track. Uh, like this portable speaker, there's no radio in this car so this is what I use. Uh, charger for the phone since I'm gonna have the GPS and the music playing Bluetooth a little holder for the phone uh, Nothing else is in the car So right now I'm gonna gather my tools and stuff and show you what tools that I take to the track with me So real quick, I'll run through what I'll bring to the track bring one of these uh, big totes so extra spark plugs I have a brand new alternator since it's so far and it's expensive to get home just in case this goes up I have a brand new one I have a brand new distributor because this is what got me stranded last time so I'll just like to have these with me uh, some paper towels an extra alternator belt I have a uh, some gasket maker, some Permatex, extra lug nuts, and some bolts and nuts, various sizes, spare fuses, uh, some Teflon tape, duct tape, uh, butt connectors just in case I rip anything. A funnel, zip ties, and for the tools, I carry a half inch breaker bar, a set of open end wrenches, gloves, a set of sockets. A hammer, a 3 8 wrench, a magnet in case I drop anything I can't get to, um, pliers, different set of pliers here. I have a screwdriver, pickle fork. Allen keys, 
Also have uh, some extensions, uh, short socket set, needle nose pliers, 32 for the axles. So that's pretty much it for the tool. And then I always bring oil with me, coolant, brake fluid, and an air pump. So I should be pretty set just in case anything happens. I also bring a jack, jack stands, and my track wheels. And then I usually bring a chair just to sit on, like a fold out chair. And I also will bring a lunch and some water because that's pretty important. All right, so it's the next day after the last clip. It's about five in the morning, just gassing the car up to get ready to go. Uh, we have everything loaded up in the car. I loaded up everything last night. So it's good to be prepared so you're not rushing around in the morning. Um, got a helmet and gloves and everything else. It's pretty cold out here this morning. Uh, we have about a two and a half hour drive, but if you get prepared, going to the track can be a lot of fun. So if you have any questions or any comments about anything that I'm doing today, just uh, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you guys. Until then, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.